Welcome to the End of Life Journey and Beyond, The Sands of Time. My name is Lisa Straws Lawrence, and I'm a bereavement specialist. It's good to see you, Susan. Oh, it's wonderful to see you, Lisa. Thank you very much. I'm Susan Caperso, End of Life doula and legacy specialist. And we're here to bring some different and valuable information. We try and do our videos each week to bring in new topics. And we talked a little bit last week about challenges, some challenges that, that you go through after a loss. And we could talk about that um, a thousand times over the course of the year. But of course, we try and tweak it and bring in different things. This week is kind of a part B to that, I would say, right? Because we want to talk a little bit about um, doing things on purpose. And it's really important to do things and plan things purposely, because otherwise you it won't. Happen. That's you right. won't. It won't happen. That's so right. we divided the show a little bit today into two parts. So Lisa and I will each talk about a, one subject uh, before a loss in your family, um, whether it's for you, you know, the person with the diagnosis watching this or a person or a friend or family member. And then we're going to talk about two things that you can plan for and do on purpose after that loss. So we're trying to well round it a little bit here and and uh, come so full circle in some of the conversation. And I just wanted to make a point, Lisa, that you know you could be listening today and and just know that it's not just uh, for a spouse that we're That's talking right. about. It's not That's just right. for a friend. It's not just for a parent. It could be anyone in your life that's going through before they pass or after they pass. And that's what we try and bring into our channel here, you know, talking about full spectrum before, yes. during, and after. Yes. Right? Oh. So Lisa, I know you, you're you going to start today for us and talk about a little bit about on purpose before yes. the person you love is passing. Yes. So after almost, I guess, 13 months, um, I knew that my husband was dying. I mean, he had pancreatic cancer and it was bad. Um, and there seemed like there was basically no hope. Um, doctors were not being very positive with us. So he and I discussed a trip. Is there any place that we could go one last time together and enjoy some time in some way? Um, and I thought, number one, it can't be too far away because, you know, we need to, to feel comfortable. It couldn't be a long trip. We knew that as well. And so it needed to be something that we could both feel um, was designed for us. And I brought up Rhode Island. There's a place called Newport, Rhode Island, where these beautiful homes are. Um, and this is, by the way, a December. So I was thinking about the holidays and thinking about how these beautiful homes, which used to belong to the Vanderbilts and the Roosevelt's and other people, these were their summer homes, um, and that they would be all decorated for the holidays. And I thought, how beautiful that would be for us. So number one, I had to find a place that we'd be comfortable. So I found an inn. I, I didn't want to be in a hotel because I wanted to be more personal. And I contacted the owner. Once I started calling in, I contacted the owner and I asked about um, in-room service because that was important in case he couldn't leave the room. And then I talked about location because I wanted to make sure that it was a place that we didn't have to travel too far to or walk around too much. You know, so I took everything into consideration, his physical well-being at that time, his situation um, and how what we wanted. We wanted a, a place that was celebratory. We wanted a place that was pretty, that would bring a lot of, um, a sense of, of uh, how do you describe it? A sense intimacy, of, intimacy well -being. between the two of you. Well-being and intimacy, right, right. Um, and I planned, talk about pre-planning. I planned every aspect of that trip when we would leave, you know, um, how long we would stay, because it couldn't be too long. Um, I, I planned where, of course, and meals. 
all of it was all pre-planned. And we had an amazing long weekend in Rhode Island in Newport. And I knew sometimes that he was not up for walking around or he was not up for even leaving the room. And that was okay. Because as I said, I had brought, you know, I had decided I'd bring in food. There were times where I just went for a walk myself. I just need some air myself. And he said to me, go, go walk. Um, and, and we did visit those homes and they were beautiful. Um, and we shared that time together. And he died three weeks after that. I'm really grateful that we did that trip. Without the pre-planning of it, it never would have happened. So looking at every aspect of it was really important. Um, and I'm I'm so happy that we did that. You know, Lisa, thank you for sharing that. That that that's really a personal story. And it's you did that on purpose. Yeah. And that's the the title of today's uh video because you know, without doing that planning, I mean, get out a notebook, get out a pad, and you start ahead of time, and you planned everything, single detail, down to the food, down to, you know, the location, where you are. You have to do it with mindfulness in that purposeful planning, you do. because, you know, you knew you wanted it to become a beautiful memory. And because you did it so well, and because you did it on purpose, being mindful about the situation, uh, it did turn out exactly that way. It, it yeah. turned out to be a memory that you've mentioned multiple times throughout our videos. You've mentioned that trip because it meant so much to you. And it was, it's significant because it's being able to say goodbye, but to recognize that importance of being together That's with right. the person that you love. That's right. And this doesn't have to be a trip with your spouse. Yeah. This could be a trip with your mom, yeah. with your sister. Yeah. I have a friend now who told me a story the other night about how she planned how dad always wanted to go cross country and she didn't know how she was going to figure that one out because it was a long hard trip it was three weeks that they took yeah. and but they did it and it's yeah. such a memory for her that that's you know she thinks of it all the time i want to mention she, a book okay yeah. because i just realized there's a book called driving miss daisy Nor miss norma miss norma Something driving like Miss Daisy? Miss That's the movie. That's the movie. So it must be Driving Miss Norma. Um, it's a book about somebody who was in her 90s and she refused further treatment. She didn't want any more treatment. She knew that she was dying and had maybe a year, they said. And her son and daughter-in-law, who had an RV, decided to go throughout the country with her and their dog. And what they did was they did a journal and Facebook posts and people started meeting them at the places they were going and doing incredible things for them. Um, wow. Celebrating her last birthday and a parade in town and giving her keys to the town. It's wow. so beautiful and it's true. So this is a factual book. It's a beautiful, beautiful story. So I think it's Miss Norma, Driving Miss Norma. Beautiful wow. book. Yeah. So, that sounds like a great book to read. Great book to read. Really nice. So you but, did that on purpose, yeah. you know, um, really on purpose. Not yeah. like planning, um, <laughs> let's go to Sedona with my girlfriends and have right. a fun weekend. Right. You know, you need to plan all the details. Yeah. So no matter who that is in your life, if that's what they love, you know, if that's what you love together, if it's a little bit of travel, you can be mindful and do it on purpose, yes, right? Okay. That's the moral with, of with, story. With some flexibility, because I knew that he might not be able to walk. Or I did the driving. I mean, you know, and sometimes he just wasn't well. Um, and you just have to be flexible about that. But right. you have to plan. 
Because if we didn't plan it, never would have happened. Yeah. So thank you for that. One of the um, one of the stories I wanted to talk about uh, because I've encountered you know so many families, and it's not all about traveling. You know, some people don't even like to travel at all. But it would be a simple gathering, and I call it simple, but it can be elaborate. It could be at home in your house, so you know you or your special family member or friend don't have to go too far. It could be in somebody else's house that has a little bit more space, but it could be, it's what we call a life celebration. You know, Lisa and I help people after um, a passing to help with that life celebration. But this this is a different kind of family celebration. You're not gonna invite, you know, your neighbors that you saw six months ago down the road. It's gonna be intimate family and friends. And, and you plan for this. and. Watch your dates because it depends on your diagnosis or their diagnosis and how much time you're given and how much time is on that timeline. And you'd rather this family gathering and celebration a little bit earlier than later in the game when maybe they won't be um, speaking yeah. too much yeah. and they're too tired to attend. So it's important to recognize that but then when it comes to that, also, you have to remember about something Lisa and I talk about all the time, communication and honesty, because if you're not talking about that diagnosis and that the doctor said six months, generally the doctors, you know, they, they know it's not always right. And miracles happen. Mm -hmm. And we know that we've mm -hmm. seen that, too. Yeah. But keep that in the back of your mind, you know, time wise, because you want your person or yourself to be present and to be able in, to enjoy your time with family and friends. And again, purposely plan the menu. Okay. Let's make it all their favorite foods, everything. Right. I don't care right. if it's tacos, you know, right. plan all of their favorite foods, make a playlist, take time to do this, not just sixties music. Let's find some sixties that they loved and certain you know, certain groups that they listen to and artists that they that they love through the years. Um, uh, decor, you know, you can make it a theme party and just make that a beautiful space. I have this thing about fairy lights and making, you know, the place look like a winter wonderland mm -hmm. or, you know, I love that. I have some trees in my living room now that won't go away. I, they stay out all year long because it makes me feel, well, whatever that may be, it might be comforting to them. Make plan on purpose your your invitation list, okay? And purposely, there are so many sites right now. I've seen a, quite a few, you know, in helping others to plan their invitations, but they have life celebration invitations. Nice. Okay, and you could put the person's photo on there and you can come up with a beautiful, positive, inspiring reason why you're having this family gathering if you can't do it yourself well then purposely yeah. make your list of people who can help yeah right and put it out there and you're going to ask this person can you make sure the desserts are taken care of for me can you just make this one thing can you make sure all the vegetable platters are done you know enlist in help because anybody will help Everybody wants to help. And, and I just want to say that a lot of people don't know what to do and how to help. And that is such a great opportunity for people. They want to figure out what they can do. Yeah. And when you say, oh, nothing, you know, they feel helpless. They do nothing. And they ask, and then they do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but how it's because it's it? hard to ask. I'm it the biggest part ask. when it comes to that. It's hard for me to ask anybody for anything. But it's I always say, no, it's okay. Feeling to say to somebody, I really need some help with such. And they're excited that you actually reached out to them and that you said, oh yeah, I'd love to do that. And that's really how most of them will feel. So, but, yeah. but by depriving them of that opportunity, you're not giving them a chance to really show how much they care about you. That's right. And, yeah. you know, and the event itself can be so 
um, beautiful. If you think of the little details, don't think to yourself here in this today, oh, well, I don't know how to plan a party. I don't know how to do any of that. But you can, but you can, yeah. you know, you, when you're planning, have, have a friend help you sit down and have a friend help you and say, I want to do this, this, and this. Um, but also plan for, for, you know, the evening plan to do things like have everybody, and you can put this on the invitation, have everybody bring their funniest memory yes. of yes. something that they did with that person. And you, and you don't have to, if you're not the person that's throwing it for yourself, if you're somebody else right now, um, you know, it's easy to ask some, ask everybody on that invitation and surprise surprise the person a little bit surprises are wonderful yeah. so as we all get up and stand up and talk about our favorite story or favorite memory you know um at the everybody will be laughing and sharing and and having such a nice time and you know and i've done this before where i've asked everybody to, uh, to bring one object Ooh. bring one object it could be um it could be a little tchotchke that's on your shelf in your house that reminds you of an event that you were at with them and how crazy and silly things were. Bring the, bring the, whatever it may be, you yeah. know? That's a great um, idea. Right. So it could be the memory. It could be a story. It could be a photo. You can ask people to bring a photo. Photos are great. You know, and, and say, remember this, remember yeah. when we went here remember and this happened. <laughs> yeah. And before yeah. you know it, everybody's laughing and, right. and, you know, having a good time. And that's the whole, that's the whole reason, but you have to be mindful. You have to do it on purpose yeah. and you have to do all the little details on purpose for it yeah. to come out as special as it will. Yeah. And, you know, I always tell this, I always tell this story to people. This had happened many years ago and it was a, a older woman you know, uh, she, I guess she had like a six month diagnosis and the, uh, family did something like this and they put something together and it was more beautiful and creative. They had grandchildren helping with all the creative ideas and it was such a beautiful celebration. And then she passed away, um, probably within the month after they had this celebration for her. And do you know, hundreds of people showed up um, at her service at the two hour wake yes, yes. that we use to grieve, right? Mm -hmm. And we're expected to grieve and that's it. And guess what everybody there was talking about? Thank God we had that time and that celebration right. for right. Aunt Mary. Thank God, because we sat together, we laughed, we talked about funny stories, we listened and she partied right there with us, you know, yeah. that's what they talked about yeah. at the service. Yes. Yeah. And you think that 95%, 98% probably, and I'm guessing with these numbers, don't do something like that. Yeah. They don't do these things on purpose and plan them. And what a way for everybody, friends, family, extended friends, family what a way to help them um grieve and mourn aunt mary in just a little bit better way yeah thank god we had that yeah i'm going to jump in and just because i just thought of it i made a birthday party for my mom when she was 70 and she'd been sick and she looked frail and, and all um and i decided that i would do a surprise party for her purposefully uh because i didn't know her health in the future um, she died, I guess, about a year after that. I had 98 people. I looked at, I took her whole address book and I invited everybody, including her kindergarten friends that she had in her address book, who came to this, by the way. Um, it was a big party, total surprise. She thought she was coming to our anniversary party. Um, <laughs> and when she walked in, everybody started singing happy birthday to her. She was totally overwhelmed. It was so amazing. And that is what they remembered when we had the memorial service. That is what they remembered. 
that they had you all know? come to this amazing party where they That's all beautiful. enjoyed the time with her. Um, and I mean, she wasn't completely well there. She couldn't, she had no breath, so she couldn't blow out the candles. Everybody started helping her blow out the candles. You know, she couldn't dance all the dances, but you know, there she was with everybody. And, and she knew that we have to celebrate all the lives. It's an amazing celebration of her life. Even and though Lisa, we know her. this, we know this, you yeah. know, but most people, when you don't know this, um, they suffer for a long, long time. When you can come full circle in a person's life and celebrate their life like this, wow, what a difference yeah. it makes. It's We're right. all dying. That's We're right. all going to die and go back home, I believe, whatever you be want to believe, you believe, but it's important to know that we are here for a short time and to do That's these right. things. So That's now right. there's a couple things that we'd like to share, Lisa, about um, after a person yeah. passes and how do you plan purposely and mindfully um, doing a few things that will help you to flow through the, the process of grief and mourning? Yeah. So and Lisa, you Mother's had a Day, story. Mother's Day and Father's Day. To me, those are really important days, whether your parents are here or not. And most of us, our parents are no longer alive. And, but, you know, we still have our own celebrations. So to me, you want to think about how you're going to celebrate them and bring their memories back. So that could be a place that they love to go. That could be food that they love to eat or a recipe that they really love to make. Um, something, I the hardest thing for me is to say, well, they're not here anymore, so that's it. You know, that's the end. And to me, that that is another death. So for me, it's let's keep those memories alive and the wonderful celebration of that person and who they were to you. My parents, obviously, you know, so important the love and every all the memories and all so you know I mean I love movies and of course I always show my movies um and that's for me but you could go someplace they really enjoyed or you could do something that really reminds you of them whatever that might be but again it's got to be purposeful because a day will come and a day will pass and then that's it um and to have that special day with them in mind makes you really smile and realize that they're still part of you because they're in your heart and those memories never die. And I tell people that all the time and they just, you have to get that. You have to understand what that means. It means every year at the on the birthday or, or on, you know, a special anniversary or something, you celebrate. But again, you got to plan it. So if I plan the thing that I'm going to see or the place I'm going to go, or, you know, the day that I want it to be, it will happen. If I say, oh, well, maybe this, maybe that, it's not going to be. It's just not going to happen. People talk. And then it's done. And they turn around and they say, oh, I wish I had or I should have done. No, 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 no. Don't do that. So something that's special, something that reminds you of those people something that keeps them right there with you. And they'll make you smile. and make you feel like, wow. And it's okay to be sad because they're not here anymore. That's okay. It's not, you know, that's part of it. But to have that wonderful celebration and memory and still keep them like that, that to me is the gift. And right? I would say to make sure you send that invitation out. I would say to make sure their music's favorite music's playing yeah. in the background again you can do their food and and yeah. um have photos have big photos of them all over the place sure. you know and it might be hard yeah i'm not saying big celebration i'm saying just even if it were the family or just some people some friends or whatever it's going to be like let's right. say your friend is, is something to honor them correct Correct. Could be they were a fisherman. So let's plan a fishing ex trip. expedition. Trip. Yeah. In their That's honor. Right. right. That's right. That's right. And how wonderful that is to share that together with your friends, with your family, whoever. But how wonderful that is. What a beautiful thing to do. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and the second thing we want to talk about um, 
after mm -hmm. is to purposely plan things that make you feel better, you know, and, and it could be a long time before you feel better, mm -hmm. you know, loss and grieving and, and missing somebody doesn't just go away, especially if they've been in your life forever. So a couple years back, I was with a friend one day who act, she had lost her husband a year before mine. And we live on Long Island. We live on such a beautiful place with beautiful beaches. And we both said to ourselves, hey, last summer, how, did you go to the beach often? Do you, how often do you get to go and take a free day and escape and enjoy the beauty? And she says, you know, not once this past summer. And I said the same thing because I'm working so hard that that's not a priority, you know, to just take a free day and escape and go to the beach. Yeah. So we thought about that and we talked about it and we said, you know, it's such a safe space and comforting and soothing to be in nature and to be by the water. And let's not let this happen ever again. So it was, I guess it was, we, we talked about this around March. And we said, all right, get out your calendar. And that's what we did. We got out the calendar and we said, let's plan it now. And we started on, could have been maybe June 1st or whatever it was. And we ended around, around Labor Day. And we planned every two weeks. And we planned that the first, first time would be hard choice. You know, what beach do you love and want to go to? Second time would be by choice. We would go back and forth every two weeks. We'd go to beaches that we've never been to. And there were many on Long Island. Oh, yeah. And we just brought a sandwich, you know, and then a couple of waters with us. And we brought our chair and our blanket. And we went to the beach and had the best day ever. And guess what? We did that every two weeks because it was on the calendar. Yeah. Because it, we did it on purpose and because there was a plan. Life gets busy, but guess mm -hmm. what? When I made my next appointment and going to the beach was Thursday morning, I made sure to plan around that. And yeah. I'll do that Friday morning or Thursday night or whatever. And you don't have to take the whole entire 10, 12 hour day. You know, we took probably about, we would go for about four hours. That's so when traveling, you know, maybe we were gone five hours and nine to two, and that's doable. It's not the whole day. And doing this twice a month. So again, I'm telling you this because I would have never went to the beach once yeah. that summer if it wasn't planned and I knew it was on my schedule. I had to fit it in on purpose. And guess what that did for me? It brought me back to nature and it brought peace into my life. And I realized how much I need peace in my life. And that's one way to do it. How long did and you do it for? The best, the entire summer entire summer how wonderful we did it the entire summer and um you know now the plan is again we'll schedule it in this year and maybe this time we'll go to parks or mm -hmm. we'll do some different things it doesn't have to be the beach if you're not a beach person maybe it's just getting out and going and having lunch or breakfast at the diner with a friend once a month yeah. Yeah. whatever it is if you don't plan it and do it on purpose it okay. probably won't happen. That's right. That's right. So that's the whole point of, of us talking today because it's so important to plan it, write it down, jot it down on your calendar, and don't let things get in the way. That's right. That's right. Of that. So you know, for, for daily things to get in the way, you have to make this a priority for your life. Exactly. So what started out for me, it was a little mastermind with three other women in my life but we realized that we when we were together we had such great conversation we all clicked there was a chemistry there that we really really liked the conversation so we thought you know what let's do this more often let's do this once a month we'll call it our girls night mm -hmm. okay and instead of just you know meeting at her house or her house let's try a different restaurant on long island one that we've never been to before. And we take turns in picking that restaurant. And I gotta tell you, come three and a half weeks, 
I so look forward to that. And it, it's this week for me and it's on my calendar and I oh. can't wait. And I will not schedule anything after four o'clock on that day because I look forward sure. to the girls' yeah. night. Sure. You know, and we do that on purpose because it brings us such, um, you know, a, it's a feel good yes. moment in time. Yes. And I'm so happy that we schedule that on purpose. And mm -hmm. we, we've been doing that now for at least two years. Nice. Wow. That's great. And we don't stop. And the, and the longer the time that's going on, um, the more we actually crave it and look forward to it. Nice. And that's you know, because out. being yeah. single again, I don't go out to many restaurants, you know, and this is my opportunity to be going out and socializing. And I actually feel like, wow, I do go out to restaurants a lot, even though that's only once a month. You know, I'm trying new places, and right. but it's all on purpose. Right. And that's what we want to get through. Today. Well, and adding on purpose is groups. If a group is meeting, you know, give it a try. It's meeting on a certain day. Maybe it's a social activity group. I joined after two years. I joined us. Oh, no. It's only a year. That's right. I want to be around single people because we had so many couples that were friends. So I want to be around single people. And this was a fun activity group. I, I was not looking to date. I was just looking to have fun with people. And so I had to plan, um, you know, to to go to those activities. And look at my calendar and make a commitment and um, do Hold it. Hold yourself accountable. Yeah, make yeah. it accountable, commitment. Yeah. These are all really important words when it comes to planning on purpose. Yes. And by right. the way, believing that you deserve it. It's nice to, it's nice to know. Well, we're going to talk more about that we next are. week, Lisa. We are. We are. Next week, we're going to talk about, you know, the feelings that are associated with yes. planning yes. on purpose and yes. guilt and Yes. shame and yes. all those wonderful words we talked about right yes. but hopefully but these there. ideas have been really good for people because you can see that purposeful planning really does result in yeah. action <laughs> that's right yes. yep and action helps that's right you know to flow through this process okay. so um lisa talk a little bit about what you've been doing lately well besides being in florida <laughs> and meeting people and handing out our cards. I've handed out all our cards because a lot of people down here are single. They're widows um, or, you know, they've lost people. And so they've been very grateful, by the way, to have a, a YouTube video series that they can Oh, look that's at. wonderful. Yeah. I feel Thank really you for happy. sharing that. Yeah. Sure, sure. Wonderful. And I, and you and know, I know you're looking by the way, to new topics. To anything that people feel is uh, important to them so that's what i've been doing and lisa does some bereavement counseling i do um, i do her information is there on top contact her anytime and you can schedule a few sessions with her yes right? and what about you what have you been up to well one of the, the newer things that i'm doing and, and i'm really excited about this because my my legacy work is so important to me and I help healthy, vibrant people, as well as people with a terminal diagnosis to create this book, the story of their life. And I woke up a few weeks ago in the middle of the night and I, I say it was God told me, well, yeah, you can help one person at a time, but how about training other people to do what you do and think of how many more people you can help to create their legacy for their families and for the future generations that they'll never get a chance to meet. And I mm -hmm. thought, wow. So I put together a training program. It's a certification program. And you can find that on my website, um, susancaperso.com. Same thing as eastandulacare.com. But there's a certification program there and there were, there's a special that I'm having um, for a little longer, you know, for the holidays and for the new year. So take a look at that. If you have any questions, just feel free to give me a call. And it was nice. great talking with you today, Lisa. And I can't. I look forward to next week when we talk about a little some of those emotions that are involved with making changes and doing things on purpose. And I know you have a lot of, of creative and, and good ideas about that. Well, let me just mention that next week is exactly 14 years since my husband has been gone. 
So um, Monday, you know, January 30th. It's a significant well, he'd be event. very, very proud of you, Lisa, especially for our channel, right? And all you've yeah. learned and all you've done and yeah. how you can honor him in doing some of the, the videos that we do. So yeah. thank you for that. And yeah. thank you for joining us today. And we will see you next week. Please like and share and let, our, let your friends know about our channel uh, yeah. so we can keep the momentum going. Absolutely. And have a wonderful week. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.